What ways do we know to solve a system of equations? Graphing, and what are we looking for when we graph a system of equations? The point of intersection, and what if there's not a point of intersection? Then there are no solutions. The lines are parallel and there are no solutions, okay? Otherwise, uh, here's, here's a good question. This is a good pre-AP question. How many solutions can we have? Okay, we can either have infinitely many, none, or one. Can we have two? No, 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 I'm, 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 I'm not talking about those three. I already said those three. Infinitely many, one, and none. We know those are three options. My question is, can you have two? Or maybe a better way to, to ask it is, can I have exactly two? No, uh, we're talking about linear systems. A line doesn't curve. We just established that, right? We don't say straight line because they all are, okay? A line can't curve back on itself, so you, it cannot cross another line two different times or two different places, okay? For a, so for a linear system, a linear system, which means two lines or more, more than that, whatever, we'll, we'll go with two right now. You can only have either one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many solutions, okay? What's another way to solve a system of equations? Substitution, okay? And that's what we talked about on Friday. And you guys are feeling okay with that? Solving for one, getting the runt variable by itself, and substituting it into the other. What did you, got, what did you guys solve for on number three? You solved for this y? Okay. You solved for which x? The first x or the second x? This x? Okay. I'm okay with that. Because remember what I said was, if you find the runt variable, that makes it easy. That makes it the easiest, right? In this particular problem, there's not an easiest. Because even this y has a negative with it, and you have to divide everything by a negative, don't you? Okay? This x, you have to divide everything by a negative 3. This x, you have to divide everything by 8. And this x, or y, excuse me, you have to divide everything by 7. So you have to divide everything by something. So in this particular case, it doesn't matter does it? There's not really an easiest one. What if you were doing four? I know you didn't have to do it, but what if you were doing four, which one would you choose? The two x? You would choose to solve for that x? Why wouldn't you choose this y? You'd have a half but you'd also have another fraction here, right? This isn't divisible by four. So if you have to choose an, one with a number, make sure everything in that equation, if possible, is divisible by that number. And if it's not, don't choose it. Choose something else. Does that make sense? Okay. So now we're on part B. We're here. Okay. Another way is uh, it's either called combinations, sometimes called linear combinations, or elimination. You guys know probably that I like elimination because it's like we get to kill something that's not illegal. All right? Okay? So we're going to start here. Like I said, we're going to start here in 11 because that's about the easiest you can get. Okay? You can go through these instructions up here at the top if you want to have something very exciting to read later. Okay? But our whole goal is to eliminate one of the variables. And we're going to do that by combining combinations. We're going to do it by combining the two equations. And what I mean by that is like this. We're going to combine the two equations. What is a plus a? 2a. What is b plus negative b? 0. What is 19 plus 7? 26. 2a equals 26? a equals what? Oh my goodness, I just skipped a step. I didn't divide both sides by 2. Not everybody can skip that step yet. Okay? If you can skip that step, I'm giving you permission to skip that step. Okay? You know how I feel about showing your work. I want you showing your work. You bring me a worksheet with no work, it's a 0. Okay? 
But as we're starting to understand some of the stuff that we're starting to understand, if I can give you permission to skip some steps, is that okay with you? If you still need those steps, then please write those steps. But if you can skip those steps, if you're feeling okay with that, you may. Fair enough? Okay, so there's the answer. Well, why not? Why is that not the answer? I found A, A equals 13. Why do I have to have B? I can't graph A and B. Do I still have to have each variable defined? Yes, okay. So if I know A equals 13, I can go back up to one of these two and plug in 13, right? 13 plus B equals 19. So if I subtract 13 from both sides, B equals six. Oh my gosh, I just skipped another step. Are you okay with that one? Can I write this as a point? No, it's not X and Y. I have to have both of them though. And I want to either circle them or box them or rectangle them or whatever you want to say. Because I have to have both of this, the, the values. So look at number 12. My first question to you is which variable should we try to eliminate? Why should we try to eliminate the X? What does it take to eliminate a variable? An opposite integer, right? An opposite, the same number value, but opposite, okay? So 5X and negative 5X, it's already that way, so I just combine them. Now, some people get so caught up in, am I adding them or subtracting them? Well, guys, I'm just combining them. I'm saying, what is five and negative, or sorry, what is five X and negative five X? Zero. What is three Y and two Y? Five Y. What is 31 and four? 35. So what is Y? Seven. If Y is seven, can I find X? Which one would you substitute it in? Why would you choose the top one? Because it's multiplier, it's coefficient is not negative, okay? But then the rest of the numbers are bigger. So, okay, really at this point, it's, it's what are you most comfortable with? Are you com more comfortable dealing with bigger numbers? Are you co more comfortable with dealing with negative numbers? That's up to you, okay? So uh, I'm going to choose the top one because that's, that's what I heard first. So 5x plus 21 equals 31. So subtracting 21 from both sides, I get 5x equals 10, x equals 2. So that's the answer. Why can I put it in? I couldn't put this one in an ordered pair. Oh. So 7, 2. But I found this one first. Okay. Some of you look are looking at me like I am a ridiculous, and I am sometimes, okay? But what I'm trying to do is tell you all the things I've heard before so that you really understand why they have to go how they have to go. Deal? Okay, look at 14. Is there a variable that will eliminate easily? Is there variables that are already opposite of each other? Three and two are opposite of each other? Two and negative eight are opposite of each other? Well, they're opposite signs, but they're not opposites of each other, right? So answer my question first. Are there variables that are opposites of each other? No. Okay, what I need to do is I need to get two variables opposite of each other. Okay, I can do that by multiplication. If I multiply the entire problem by the same thing, have I changed the value of the problem? No. So, would you like to eliminate the X's or would you like to eliminate the Y's? Why would you choose the Y's? 
because they're already opposite signs, okay? Would it be hard to eliminate the X's? No, okay? If I want to make these the same number, can't I multiply this one by negative two and this one by a three? And wouldn't they be the same then and opposite? But you already told me you want to eliminate the Y's, so let's eliminate the Y's. What do, what do I do? What do I have to make them? Okay, so you want to multiply the top by four. If I multiply the top by four, I'm going to get 12X plus 8Y equals 92. Is that what you want? Why do you want that? Because I have a negative 8Y and a positive 8Y. Fair enough? They have to be the same number. That's why I said they're opposites. I wasn't purely talking about just their signs, but the whole numbers are opposites of each other. Okay? Once I have that, now what? Combine them. 2X and 12X. 14X. Negative 8Y and positive 8Y. Zero. Please don't say cancels. That's another vocabulary issue that we need to deal with. That goes to zero. Okay? Uh, and then 62 and 92. 154. So if 14x equals 154, what does x equal? 11. Okay? If I know x, can I find y? Which equation would you plug x into? Number one, does it matter? No. It doesn't matter which one I choose. I should get the same answer both ways, correct? Is one easier than the other to you? Which one? The top? So 3 times 11, so 33. Do I need to write this? 3 times 11 for you? Okay, plus 2y equals 23. So 2y equals negative 10. Okay, it looks like I can't skip that step. Hold on. Subtract 33. Subtract 33. 2y equals negative 10. So y equals negative 5. What's my answer? 11, negative 5. Is that right? Prove it. Thirty-three minus ten equals twenty-three. Three times eleven, two times negative five. What is thirty-three minus ten? Does twenty-three equal twenty-three? So it must be the right answer. Not yet. They have to work for both. And chances are, if I plugged it into the top, when I plug it back in, it'll work because that's the one I solved for. So especially plug it into the other one just to make sure. So 2 times 11 is 22. 8 times, sorry, negative 8 times negative 5, so plus 40 equals 62. Does 62 equal 62? Is that the right answer? Yes. Look at 16. Which variable would you try to eliminate? You would try to eliminate y? Tell me why you would try to eliminate y. So if you try to eliminate x, you have to multiply something by both of them. Is that what you're saying? Okay. And if you try to eliminate y's? You only have to multiply the top by negative 4, right? So we're going to solve this one by eliminating x. I have tissues if you're going to cry, okay? All right, so what are we going to do to eliminate x? Multiply the top by 4. I know 4 and 3 doesn't matter which one I choose to be negative. 
Now as long as I choose one of them to be negative, right? Okay, so I get negative 12x plus 8y equals 40. You with me so far? And I get 12x minus 24y equals 24. Correct? Combine them. Negative 12x and 12x? Zero. 8y and negative 24y? Negative 16y. 40 and 24? 64. So negative 16y equals 64, so y equals negative 4. How do I find x? Where am I substituting y in? Duh, for y, I get that, where? It's my choice, I have four choices. One, two, three, or four. These would be bad choices. There's bigger numbers, way bigger, uglier numbers. Choose one of the beginning ones. Which one? Number one, doesn't matter. Okay, I'll choose the one I heard first then. 3x plus 8 equals negative 10. Subtract 8 from both sides. 3x equals negative 18, so x equals negative 6. What's my answer? Negative 6, negative 4. Is it, is it the right answer? Prove it. Negative 18 plus 8 equals negative 10. Negative 10 equals negative 10, correct? Okay. Negative 24 minus 32 equals 8. 8 equals 8. Is it the right answer? I said plus and then wrote minus, didn't I? Okay. Oh, I did? Okay, sorry. I thought minus, I mean plus. It doesn't matter. You can't read my thoughts, nor do I want you to. Questions? One, two, three, four.